All right, this one's great because it did not ask for restrictions on the domain, even though this one still is, that's kind of simple. So let's go ahead and simplify this thing. So on the left there, we got 1 minus x, and then on the right, we got x minus 1. So we could say that on the left, we're going to multiply it by x minus 1. But again, we have to do it to the numerator and denominator here. So that would give us x minus 1 times 5 all over x minus 1 times 1 minus x. And this is being subtracted from uh, this other term here. We're going to multiply it by 1 minus x. So we'll multiply it by the numerator as well. So we got a 1 minus x all over x minus 1 times 1 minus x. So this shows that the denominators are matching again. They're common, which means that we can subtract. So the denominator is x minus 1 times a 1 minus x. Uh, in the numerator, I can distribute the 5 right now just to save some time. 5x minus 5. And then it's minus. Well, it would have a 1. And then we'd have to add that x right there. Uh, again, that's because we're subtracting a negative x, which is the same thing as adding an x. So at this point, we're just looking to combine like terms. So I got a 5x plus an x, which would give me a 6x. And then also we got a negative 5 and a negative 1, which would be a negative 6. Now in that numerator, I can see that I can factor out a 6 from both of those terms. So I'm going to factor out a 6, which leaves me with x minus 1. And the denominator is the same. And hopefully we see that this x minus 1 cancels out this x minus 1. Leaving us with f of x equals the 6 in the numerator. And then a 1 minus x in the denominator. If you don't like the parentheses there, just don't use them. That's an x. If by chance you got really uh, ambitious, um, you'd find that x can't equal 1 for either of those denominators. So. How do you check?